Hi everyone, we're back and the topic for discussion today is nursing fundamentals in the clinical setting. This is going to be one of four pages and I hope that you benefit from it because this is just a wide topic as without a doubt we can see that nursing has really grown. We can think about the Florence Nightingale times when everything was so restricted and now today we have untold amounts of areas like ICU, ER, CCU, maternity, we can go on and on, but all the different, the doctor's office, urgent care, wherever nurses work. Let's first discuss the standards of care which you'll find in every institution. These of course are considered advancements in nursing. That there must be a standard of care. Every institution has its policies and procedures in place. There's things like infection control, we have laws like HIPAA, um, and then there are many other standards that nurses have to follow. If you work in the ICU and you have a patient who's confined to bed for a long time, there's standards like we have to turn them, special mattresses are put underneath them to prevent skin breakdown, and there are even charts that are bits of information that we have to fill out to make sure that you know the standard, like the Braden scale, that standard of care is met. Now we're going to talk a little about the circulatory system and if you go to the actual website dearnurses.org it's just packed with helpful information on the circulatory system. But I'll just try to wrap this up. This is just like an overview. We know that the heart has four chambers, two atria and two ventricle. Um, there's two on the right, two on the left. And it also has valves and what the valves do they stop the backflow of blood as blood is pumped through the heart. It keeps the blood flow of blood unidirectional, so you wouldn't expect that backflow of blood. Of course, in the case of patients who have problems like mitral valve regurgitation, they do have blood backflowing and enlargement of the ventricle. But right now, the tricuspid valve is that one between that lies between the right and vent atrium and ventricle and stops the backflow. And then we've also got the uh, mitral, which is on the left, which pretty much does the same thing. And the papillary muscles, um, they work, they're in the ventricles, and what they do is they help to pull those valves open and close. And then we have um, the cordae tendine, which is like strings also attached to the valves, which also works for that purpose. Now let's discuss um, documentation, which is very important in nursing. Um, we have to document, and it's very important because you have to know, have some kind of a reference point of what you've done and what is going on. Let's take the case of this patient, Melissa, who arrives in the preoperative area <clears throat> in preparation for surgery, and the nurse does an assessment, vital signs, and oxygen saturation. She documents all her findings, and what it does, it gives her a baseline. During surgery, of course, medications will probably be given and this will impact blood pressure also and vital signs so these are monitored usually and they're also documented uh, following surgery the same thing applies patient is taken to the post-operative area the blood pressure is also monitored oxygen saturation IV fluids are given if they're dehydrated they give them extra fluid if the blood pressure is high they might be given medications and there is documentation of everything Whatever medications are given, it's documented. Whatever blood pressure, you, which was your baseline, when you found that blood pressure high that you medicated that patient, or in the case of a low blood pressure, whatever low blood pressure you had that caused you to have to give IV fluids. So everything is documented. And this documentation is very important because you have to have a standard of care. Now, I just wanted to briefly talk about the blood pressure and blood pressure is measured by an instrument called the sphygmomanometer. We know that you use the stethoscope as well to hear the blood pressure. And the blood pressure is usually, there's a high number which is the systolic pressure and a low one which is the diastolic pressure. And there is more information at dearnurses.org on that topic. And there's also a case study at dearnurses.com on uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm because that's fine when the blood pressure everything works according to protocol but what about when you have something like an aneurysm which causes an obvious bulge in an artery and then it ruptures it can rupture in the abdomen like the abdominal aortic aneurysm not many people get them repaired I don't think because it carries a very poor prognosis sometimes if they're caught in time they can be repaired it's unfortunate that sometimes they rupture without any warning and it's not always easy to detect. So I hope you've learned something from this. 
And like I said, if you take the time to go to dearnurses.org, there's plenty of helpful information on the circulatory system, documentation, and standards of care. Have a great week. Why uh, put it onto um, 